Hi everybody, it's Mr. Johnson here, and we are talking today about our still life drawing project and the vocabulary terms associated with that project. So there are a few examples on the screen of what we will eventually be working on in class. But first, let's talk about the vocab terms that apply to this assignment. Now, yes, some of these vocabulary terms we've already gone over and you probably already know them, which is wonderful, but we are going to have a little vocab quiz um, in a few weeks at the end of the project. So make sure that these are terms that you know. I would have your sketchbook and writing utensil handy so you can write down these terms and their definitions to help you as we work on the project. So let's talk about the first one, shall we? The first one is a still life, and that is an artwork based on an arrangement of objects. Now we have seen still lives before, and we have talked about them before in our class. So here's, of course, one example of a still life. You can really use any objects in your still life that you want, whether it's, you know, vases, bottles, and fruit like the one on the screen. But it could, you know, it could be toys. It could be, um, you know, uh, food objects. It could be plants. It could be, um, you know, kitchen utensils, tools. It doesn't really matter. So the next vocabulary term that we're going to talk about is composition. This is one, a common one because it's very important. So we talk about this a lot. That's how an artist arranges the elements in their artwork. And we've talked about this before, but composition, right? The thoughtful arrangement of elements in an artwork. So here on the screen now, I know that's small, but there are four different composition sketches where this artist is trying to determine which composition is going to be the best for their drawing. The next vocabulary term we're talking about today for our still life project is scale. Now scale in artwork is the relative size of one element to another. So in the example here uh, of Spider-Man, his head is greatly distorted. So, you know, they've changed the scale, right, of the head to the body. Think about scale um, in the way that we think about proportions. So scale isn't necessarily the size of something, but it's how that size compares to something nearby. You can tell if something's extremely large by putting it next to something we know the size of. Um, the fourth vocabulary term for the project is overlap, which is drawing one object on top of another in order to show depth. So these apples here on the screen in the bottom uh, use overlap, and that shows that the apple uh, in the bottom center is in front, that's closest to us, the viewer, because it overlaps the other ones. As those apples recede in space, they are shown behind that front apple. So using overlap is a great way to show depth in space in an artwork. Now we have four more terms. You ready for the last four? I'm glad because we're doing them. Um, they are emphasis, right? Emphasis is one area of the artwork that draws your eye through contrast. So in this photo example, the red dye is the emphasis, or there's emphasis on that area. We're emphasizing that by making it different. Here, it's that the photo is black and white, and that one dye is in color. There are a lot of ways you can create emphasis, whether it's through scale, right, color, texture, but it's an area of the artwork that draws our eye through contrast. The next vocabulary term that I'm sure you know is shadow. That's a darker part of an object that's not directly in the light. So we're talking about this, of course, in terms of drawing. So if you look at the uh, water pitcher that's on the screen, the beautiful drawing of this object, you can see that the shadow right, on this object is on the right side. It's because the light is coming from the left, so the right side is darker. That's not directly in the light. That's the shadow. Uh, the highlight is the lightest part of an object. It's where it's reflecting the light. So if you look here at the ball that's drawn in this image, that highlight is on the top right because the light in this drawing is coming from the right side. So you can see the highlight is the lightest part of the object. That's what's reflecting the light. And then the final vocabulary term for this project is a cast shadow. That's a shape of darkness cast on a surface by an object blocking the light. So when you are standing in between the light and a surface, right, your shadow that's cast on the ground, that is a cast shadow. It's cast on the ground. So here in the apple drawing, the uh, oval shape to the left of the apple, that's the cast shadow. 
Now, you can see that in the ball drawing as well. There's a cast shadow to the left. In the water pitcher above it, there's a cast shadow that goes off the right side. That's showing that an object is sitting on a surface. So shading the object itself is very important, having those highlights and shadows in that object. But in order to make it look like it's sitting on something, you need it to be casting a shadow on the ground, the table, the floor, what, wherever your object is located. So that, those are all things we'll be looking for when we work on our still life drawing project. So if you need to see any of these terms again, just flip back to the beginning of the video. There are eight vocabulary terms that go along with the still life drawing project. We are going to have a little vocab quiz later on, so make sure you keep these handy. We will be discussing them as we work on this assignment in class, because these are all things that will be very important to making a successful still life drawing. You want to think about your composition. You want to have an area of emphasis. You want to use contrast, shadows and highlights, cast shadows. You want to think about the scale of your objects so that those objects look realistic, right? You don't want something way too small as compared to the other objects. You want to make sure they're all using the same scale. And you want those objects to overlap. That way you can create the illusion of depth that some are in front of the others. So make sure that you are thinking about all of these vocabulary terms. If you have questions, please let me know. And I cannot wait to start working on our still life project.